Welcome back to the 27 and to the Boltcast, your AMS2 podcast. Today we have a special treat for you. With me on the line is none other than the Nemesis 69, the man, the myth, the legend. Anyone who has ever dipped their toe into time trial will recognize the name. Holder of dozens upon dozens of world records up and down the leaderboards, captain of the motorsports division of Flashpoint Esports, the shatterer of sim racing dreams around the world. Welcome, Nemesis, and thank you for joining us. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having us. Well, great, man. I think it'd be a great opportunity for you to just introduce yourself, let everybody know who you are. Where are you from, man? Yeah, I'm from uh, Durham in England. Uh, I'm just 20 miles away from Newcastle. All right, man. So I guess let's get right into the nit and gritty. Like everyone knows who you are. Um, anyone <laughs> in the game, you're you're basically a household household name in AMS2. Um, but like, when did you first start sim racing? I think people are probably interested in how how you do what you do. So let's start from the beginning. When did you first start? Um, the very first beginning was back in PlayStation days with to- uh, touring card, uh, token touring cards, the game. Um, I think that was released in about 1997. Um, that was my first sort of, where I took it a little bit more seriously. Uh, the British Touring Car Championship was obviously my favourite series growing up. And uh, just to sort of, you know, when you get to the AI, you think you're rubbing shoulders with the <laughs> Jason Platos of the world and, you know, the Allen menus and stuff like that. So uh, it was started off in that game and it was, even to the day you look back and think that was, you know, such a great game. The the graphics were good for, I mean, looking back in 97. Yeah. Um, everybody always says the physics was advanced for its time even though it was still almost to the point of like an arcade game you're playing with a a controller right but um it just it just made you feel like you know you're you're doing the british touring cars you know it was it was it was a really good like introduction game yeah yeah so um when did you start realizing that you were actually getting good at it I'm sure you moved on from the touring car game. Uh, from the touring cars, I, I then started playing uh, Ferrari uh, 355 Challenge on the Dreamcast. Okay. Um, that was roughly, I think, if, if, if I'm uh, not mistaken, it was about 1999. Um, that was a bit more challenging. Uh, it's definitely a bit more uh, different feel in the way it drives with the control pad. But uh, I thought that was a really good game as well. Um, and then it was like Forza, started off on Forza, Forza Motorsport. Okay. The, so I'm starting to see a pattern here. It's just sort of just like getting up in advancement. Yeah. And, and then um, obviously the games themselves, they just got better and better over over time. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I think it was when the first Xbox come out, Project Gotham Racing. Okay. Um, really enjoyed that one. Played that for quite a few years. Did you play um, Gran Turismo? I did play a little bit of Gran Turismo. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really that hooked on it. Right. Um, obviously, the Total Touring Car game was my favourite ahead of that. It was more more my scene of what, like, I have grew up watching. Right, um, right. From being, like, a young age, going to racetracks with my dad, watching, you know, start off watching Rally Cross, and then when the Touring Cars come to our local circuit, the Crofts, uh, at Croft, um, which is obviously part of the British Touring Car uh, Championship calendar. Right. Um, you know, that was my only game that I wanted to, wanted to play. You, you, you look at the, the cars, the drivers, the you know, the smell, and you just think, I, I want that to be me. Right. Even right, yeah. like from yeah. 10, <laughs> 10 years old, I think we can all relate to that. And that's obviously why we do sim racing. Yeah. Because it's, it's just something to. There's a connection. It's, it's yeah, not just to get a game. Close to it, you know, you, we haven't had like, you know, we have we're not all sort of got the money to say I'm going to go out and buy a, a race car and get me race license and then and I'm, and I'm away sort of thing you know yeah I think there were like the early days where you would think oh you know I want to be in that car and driving around that circuit with these with these guys out there so what was the first game that you I I guess you could consider you took seriously as like an adult um it was probably Project Cars one. The first series, and I do believe that was released in 2015, and I didn't get it until it become free. 
on the <laughs> Xbox Gold Pass. That's smart. Uh, <laughs> in <laughs> being tight and all. Um, right, no, it's, it's just something got to bypass because you know when you. It's a bit like how people say now um, when they when they get stuck in like sort of their set game. They think their game's like the ultimate. Right. Um, I was always like, oh, Forza, Forza, you know, Forza's the game. That's the best one. And I sort of overlooked every time I went to shop. I overlooked Project Cars and didn't even give it a try. Right. You know, so just like sort of, I picked the box up and you know when you're a kid and you have a look at like you know, and um, you know you think to yourself, no, nah, I don't want that. Right, right, yeah. Um, Whatever goes through a kid's mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying kid, I wasn't that, you know, I was still pretty, like, almost like adult then when Project right. Cars was out. But, um, but yeah, I think I, I didn't get it until about February 2017, if I believe. Um, started playing that with a controller. Um, I mean, there's a good story behind this. Um, and my cousin was, was round, round my house, and I says, I'm not liking how this feels on a controller, but it's absolutely awesome with a, you know, with a steering wheel and pedals. He says, "Oh, um, my friend's got one. Ask him if he wants to sell it." So, um, next, you know, I think it was like a week later. He says, "Oh, he's got a Thrustmaster TX." Um, he says, "You can oh. have it for forty for forty pounds." I was like, forty pounds." I was like, "Is he sure?" He's like, wow. "Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's only he's only had it a couple of months. He doesn't. He's you know he's not really into it." I says, all right, okay. So I uh, and I'm still using that wheel to the day. Really? Yeah, and I bought it for forty pounds. So obviously, I've, I've I've had a few problems over the last few years. I mean, I think the last well, the thing's say, four or five years old. <laughs> yeah, the last year. I mean, obviously, the last year I've been driving with broken pedals, um, a wheel that is pressing buttons by itself. You know when the force feedback gets a little <laughs> bit ramped up, um, so it shakes I've been to... your ARBs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are you used to traction do control? Used to you just have to you just have to turn the wheel a certain way, and you get you can increase or decrease your traction control. You don't need the uh, you don't need to bind any buttons. <laughs> yeah, it's just a bit awkward when I go around the corner and it's putting me brake bias to like fifty two, <laughs> and I go, oh no. <laughs> But, Sorry, uh, so yeah. you played Project Cars One, but I know I know personally of you from Project Cars Two, yeah. um, and um, I remember I played in two different short stints, a very very short stint when I first got the game. I think it was basically for pittance, and then the second uh -huh. time last year I played it for a, a longer stint. This is before I knew knew of you or knew you, but I, I started to be like seeing the same name over and over again. Um. Mm -hmm. And Project Cars 2 is where I think you started to really make a name for yourself, right? Yeah, it's, I, I bought it on, obviously I really enjoyed the Project Cars 1 mm. after obviously just, you know, getting it for free and thinking, wow, this game, why did I not buy this from release? Because, um, I mean, I was an Xbox guy. That was the best thing on Xbox, you know, full stop. It was amazing visuals. The cars felt really good. I mean, I didn't have the money to buy a PC, so that was like the best option for me. Right. Um, so then Project Cars 2, bought that on day release. Um, and then sort of, you know, it was the Project Cars 1 days. I mean, it, you know, when you get a wheel and stuff, um, Tom, it's like, you know yourself, there's a massive adapt like adaption right. um, phase. So, I mean, it's a game I never played before. Um I've never used a wheel before, and I think it was maybe four weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and then there was a DTM class on Project Cars 1, which it's a shame it never got entered into uh, Project Cars 2. Um, and I, I had to go to the TT, and I remember like slotting in in the top 10, like amongst like the top guys, and I thought to myself, well, phew. I've only been on it four weeks, you know, and then you start <laughs> yeah. sort of getting a hint that, like, you know, it pushes you on and inspires you to, like, you know, go further. Right, yeah. And then Project Cars 2, just a natural progression because, I mean, basically there was nothing changed in the way anything handled, you know, the cars were the same. It was just basically uh, port over new cars. Okay. You know, so, I mean, I imagine maybe, it was a little bit more sophisticated. The graphics were better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the graphics were better. You but know, there was a familiarity. Refined. The live track, you know, and it was all yeah. there was there was all all sorts of different features. But I mean, you know, from familiarizing yourself with it all, it was um, you know, it was just an easy like trans you know transition. So, but uh, yeah. Um, so that's when you started. I, 
you know, you started getting really serious and, and I know you've mentioned before with me that it led to some really interesting esports opportunities for you. Is that right? Yeah. Um, it was in 2018. Um, it was the first time I see on the game that a manufacturer actually um, put up like a sort of an esports event within the game. I mean, because the best thing about obviously the, you know, the slightly modern that used to have like um, with the TT boards, you used to do like a weekly TT. Mm hmm. But the the like incorporate like the Reynolds eSport into the like the TT event, so to qualify. But it was only like uh, people from the UK were like eligible. I see. So, um, um, so I think I do believe it was like you know obviously it was all Reynolds cars. The first round was the Reynolds McGann Rallycross um, at the French Rallycross track. Okay, and I do that. I qualified on the first event for that. So you one. qualified on a ra in a rally car, in a rally car. That's sick. Um, and I, I still kept on doing the other ones. Obviously, the I can't. I think was it the second one was a Renault Clio. Then they had a Renault Megan V6 <laughs> Clio, of course. Um, and <laughs> I think they've done some time trials in that RS01 as well. But like everybody had a, like a, a chance to qualify. I think it was like the was it the top six. Like would go was then in the semi like this is what they call the semi final so it was six from each event you know there's like four different time trials so completely open six... qualifiers for everybody in the game yeah yeah obviously if they're from the UK though okay um and it's you know if you if you qualified in the first event then top six can out you know they're through so then the next six in the next round won't be the six from the first you know what I mean right. So it was always like, you know, you're getting different players in. Um, and then the semi-final was, um, you had like 30 minutes on track. And it was at Spa and the Reynolds RS01. And I just got into the final. Um, my good friend, um, Alan Brown, who used to race for us from um, SRL. Um, I just pipped him by uh, 0 0.080, like less wow. than a tenth. To qualify for the final, and uh, and obviously you, I end up does, you think the he final holds was a grudge? A Do you think he holds a grudge? <laughs> no, he, he keeps on sometimes. You know when I've last spoke to him, and he, I, I don't think he ever forget about it. But uh, that's like, tough I can't, when I you know, can't believe it. when you know the guy and they yeah. know you. Yeah, it was it was uh, awkward at dinner parties. It was awkward. Yeah, I mean in the final, I think the team that I was in at the time, um, there were six of us from the same team in the final. Yeah. Um, and then that was like uh, just like a race. So it was at Catalonia, obviously the Barcelona circuit. Um, and that was in the Megan V6. Okay. And I ended up winning. I ended up winning it. So obviously I was like the Xbox Ronald Sports champion. And then wow. I progressed to the final, which was at Silverstone. Um, so I got like invited to go down to Silverstone. Okay, so every, when, hold on one second. So everything up to this point, you were at your home uh, yes. set up, but then they invited yeah, yeah. you to an, a third-party location. Yeah, yeah, down at Silverstone, yeah, for the oh, final. Wow. It, was when, it was on the Grand Prix weekend, and it was also when England was playing Sweden in the World Cup. Dude, that sounds like Project Cars 2. They, they really marketed that game really well. <laughs> so um, that was quite an experience. So I went down with me, um, me missus and... Um, Travel down to Silverstone and stuff like that, and you know, I was really, really confident going. I thought, you know what it is, I will win this because at the end of it, the winner got a um, a deer at Palmer Sport, What's uh, that? Palmer Sport UK, which is like it's like almost like a driving academy. They have all the driving coaches. Oh, okay. So for winning it, you got to drive like BMW M4 GT4, um, Formula Renault. Uh, there was all sorts of different cars the winner got to drive. I was really pumped up thinking, you know, this is my chance, you know, because I was thought... Was that like yes, a you... scouting opportunity? Like, they get you in these um, cars in real life and they'd have some people around be like, okay, let's keep an eye on this kid. Was it that, yeah, like that? Yeah, potentially. I thought, you know, I thought that was a big chance to try, like, prove something if I got right. that far. I mean, yeah. it was just basically as a prize to to be like, you know, oh, well done, you know, you get to drive these nice cars. But I thought, well, if I get to that point, I might have to prove a point that I can actually do it out of a sim and I might catch somebody's eye. That, you know, was, I, I, that was the era where I think 
like maybe that was like sort of like a groundbreaking era as far as I can remember. Like I don't think like obviously within the last five years, sim racing has sort of created this this uh, partnership with real life racing, but that sounds like it was right on that ground floor of that you know the start of things where you mm-hmm. know real mm-hmm. life racing teams. We're starting yeah. to try to f- talent search in esports. That's it. I mean, the final was obviously, you know, I won the Xbox. Then there was a uh, me friend NGR Fraser who won PlayStation Four, and then there was James Bolden, who's obviously world's fastest gamer now, and there was also his teammate Felucci Brembo. Um, I think James just made the transition from, um, I think, is it F O M? Um, or F4H, I can't remember which one it was. He was in that team, and then Veloce signed him up. But James actually made it to that final against me mm-hmm. by qualifying on uh, a rally weekend. I think his game that he qualified on was on Dirt 4 in the Reynolds McGann. Okay. So he got a bye to our final in, in that. Um, okay, so it was like a multi-game... like a... Yeah, they sort of merged that um, okay. that weekend. Um, the rally event and with him winning down on the rally game interesting the merged James into the final for Project Cars um, and obviously you know he's, he's such a cool guy <laughs> he's so composed I mean I was quite edgy I mean it was um, I've never used PC before I was using PC um, you know as the platform on the day I was using Fanatec wheel when I was using Thrustmaster. I was just thinking, oh. oh, God. You know, I was using load cell pedals. You know, it was, it was just completely out of my comfort zone. Did they and give you any practice time? I imagine they Not did. really, not really. Oh they God. did a little bit. Um, obviously, it was like a full setup on the, like, the Reynolds stand. We had the commentator, um, yeah. which some people might know. It was uh, Actual Vision. Okay. Uh, um, he was the... Uh, he was a commentator and that obviously like everybody crowding around watching and stuff like that you know they had photographers the they had everything you know um, yeah so i was quite i was quite like sort of nervous because i was always what was in my mind is like i've never raced on pc and i always knew there's a difference we've come from xbox to pc right like you can't just transition that quick as when i was going when i was on in the um the live show the frame rate and everything's quicker. So where my sort of reference points were, even though it was might be only milliseconds, it's enough to throw us on my break points and stuff. Okay. Um, and obviously with the, with the um, the equipment, I mean, Fanata, it was a fantastic wheel, you know, um, with the load cells and everything. So you did like it more? <laughs> Sorry? You did like it more, the Fanatec yeah. and the load cells? I can imagine. Yeah, oh, it, oh, it felt great. I mean, obviously that was the top stuff back then. Yeah. Um. See, there's some, there's some fantastic equipment out there, but I, I, I've just stuck to my trusty TX. It served me well. I know the wheel inside out. I know, you know, right. it gives me the right cues that I need, even like I say, because what happened is me, obviously, when I was telling you about running on dodgy pedals, my brake pedal snapped. <laughs> so what I had to do was use the clutch spring and put it into my brake pedal. <laughs> And now, obviously, I've got loads of, I had loads of flex in my throttle as well. So it's like, you know, sometimes you tell people and they don't believe you. Like, there's no way you're doing, like, right. putting them times in with, like, broken equipment and that. But it just goes to prove you don't have to have, you know, the top high-end stuff. If you've got the determination and sort of the yeah. drive to succeed and, and try to get yourself out there. I mean, the, the final was a massive, obviously, learning curve. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, I've seen James, how cool he was. You know, he's composed. He just sort of, he was almost looked part of like the cockpit, if you know what I mean. Like it wasn't, it wasn't phasing him. Right. That's um, cool. And you know, whereas like we were a bit like, you know, <laughs> we're up against well, it sure, here. I'm sure he's not a robot. I'm sure he, he yeah. felt that too. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, ice water I mean, in his veins. Yeah. Oh, they are, they're they're an excellent team, you know. Obviously, when they're in when they're in Veloce and that, you know, they're they're well drilled, well trained. So, how did the race um, turn out for you? Yeah, it did. It didn't go too bad. Um, I mean, uh, it was a bit up and down. I think it was just a bit of everything, really nerves. You know, I thought it was my big opportunity. 
you know, I, I when I, I was confident going down, but when you get there, it's a different thing. I mean, I only been literally sim racing for six months. Next, you know, I'm in a final. Yeah. Um, you know, it was quite it was quite an experience to say the least. I mean, yeah, some of these guys is rocket ship experience to start a game and then six months from there, yeah, you're going to you're in a in a crowd of people. For something that's, that's it, exactly. on stake, it's not just like if you make a mistake and there's no reset button, it's sort of like it's permanent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I it, empathize yeah. with you, man. That's, that's that, rough. You, you take a lot from it, though. I mean, you know, I walked away and, you know, you know, you, you see them guys and, you know, how good they were and stuff like that. Whether, the, you know, whether they've been used to PCs and that sort of equipment, it's bad right. to buy. But, um, like you say, you walked away and I thought, right. That's it. I want to knuckle down here now, and don't make this the like sort of the last experience. But I kind of went on a like a bit of a break because I mean we just had um, another child and stuff like that. So, but I was always determined, like you know, that's not the last. It, you're gonna hear rivers, sort of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just as always try making like an impression. So obviously, AMS two and Project Cars two have a shared um, history because of the yeah. SMS engine. So one of the things I wanted to ask you, um, and it's actually kind of kind of quite obvious, but I wanted to hear in your words, you know, AMS2, uh, when you heard that it was coming on the market, um, you know, you might have heard at some point that they were going to use SMS. Uh, what did, mm-hmm. what thought crossed your mind at that point? And Project Cars 2 is actually still going still moderately going strong, small, really. strong, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what, uh, what intrigued you about AMS2? I was quite excited by it when I knew it was using the same engine. Um, I was yeah, like some of like the communities and stuff that I was in, and that they're all sharing the posts, and and you know I didn't know nothing about automobile ballistic, you know, from I never really heard of it because yeah, I mean I wasn't I. I, I wasn't on PC. I mean yeah. I was always Xbox, but that that's what made me decide to get a PC. I mean I didn't get my PC until um, twenty twenty. Um, so it was just before the game got released, I think it was. Okay, so did it have the familiarity to you that you remember from Project Cars too? Because I think remember I remember from when I made the switch over to AMS two, I saw your name there too in the time trial. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, um, okay, there's got to be, you know, there's something going on. It the transition wasn't. It was different. It definitely felt different from the off. Right. Um, I first switched it on, and I, I literally tried to go the speed I was going in Project Cars too, and I was just like, it kind of gives us a bit of a reality check, and like I can't drive like this on this game, and it it took us a little while to get me bearings, um, but obviously I noticed straight away, there's 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 a difference in in the physics and the core of the game itself. Right. What kept me on track was the visuals. So I use all visuals as my cues. Okay. It's never really dependent on how the physics is feeling. It's all on my eyesight. Okay. So, you know, obviously you are getting the sensations in your hands um, through the force feedback and the detail. Yes, that's helping. But the main thing is, is through what you're seeing. Right. And it just translated because it just happens that it's the same sort of graphics engine. Yeah. It doesn't mean to say, oh, well, you, you, you know, you're good in that. So... You've gone over and you're good in this one. People would automatically assume, oh, well, the game must be the same. Um, but the complete core of the game is completely different. Yeah, it's I, just I, the cues what helps me along to do what I can do, what I've done in Project Cars 2. I felt the same way. It was like, it was similar, but enough not similar um, mm-hmm. that it, it felt completely different, even though it mm-hmm. had that shared history. Yeah. So, um, did you jump right back, right it back into TT? Um, was that the first thing that you started to explore in AMS two? I think at that time when it first came out, like that was pretty much the only game more mo- game mode that was pretty as- accessible to everybody. You know, yeah, yeah. Not many people want to log into a game and play, you know, practice day. <laughs> you know, yeah. so yeah. there's two things you could do: you can race or TT. So, yeah, I mean, I was TT, and obviously because at the start there was a bit of. Um... With the multiplayer, there was a, a few issues in beta, um, obviously because I bought it at early access. Um, 
obviously we had like the neck cord issues and stuff like that. So I just really focused on TT from the beginning and just thought, well, let's see if I can sort of, you know, get back, get back to sort of some decent lap times. Were you the first you know? person on the, you know, leaderboards in a lot of cases? Well, like, were you the first? On some of them. I mean, some of them that you see when they're not really populated, I don't bother because that doesn't sort of stimulate us to sort of want to try. Right. You know, I've got to see a massive list of people and you oh, know, okay. want to put myself out there. It's like, <laughs> I've, got, I've got to have that sort of like push to, you know, motivation to do something. Right. I mean, you know, obviously when you put yourself up there, there's always people who's going to want to knock you off your perch. Right, you're and like that, a competitive and, and element to it that you, you just need to have that challenge. That's it. It's just a challenge that, you know, if you, no matter what you do in life, you always need a challenge to keep on pushing yourself further. Right. If there's nobody to challenge you anymore, then you might as well just stop playing the game. I think everybody's different in that regard. You you have to find inspiration for what you do from wherever you get your inspiration from. Um, your mm-hmm. challenge may be seeing a lot of names on, you know, on a board and be like, hey, I'm going to beat all these guys today. Mine might be like, it's completely different. I want to mm-hmm. complete a lap today <laughs> at mm-hmm. Life or something like that, you know? Um, so um, how do you approach, you know, you selecting a car and a track? Is it, are you looking at cars that are popular cars first then? Yeah, usually popular cars. I mean, if I can give any advice to anybody, I mean, anybody new to the game or people who's played the game a while, I mean, if you find yourself good at a series, Stick at it, because you can learn a lot from one set car, and then yeah. you can transfer your skills to others. Um, it's like any game. I mean, going back to when when I bought the um, the PC steel. I mean, I bought all of them. I bought Race Room with all the content. I bought a set of cards, uh, um, the the original and um, ACC as well. I tried them all, and I just couldn't get on with them. I mean, AC. Set of course was more like a fun game to me in the terms of I was downloading mods and I was using cars that I've never like driven before and it was just sort of like oh well I can drive a Nissan Primera around Silverstone okay um, and that was just like sort of my you know go to for a bit of fun and use like, I never cars played that... AC does it have like a time trial mode. No, it doesn't have nothing like that. Oh. So it was, it was, it was kind of like I, I think it, it might have, but it's not really, um, you know, like leaderboard structured sort of thing. I, I don't see. Know. Okay, so um, that takes that element out of it. We already, yeah, we already established that that's a, a big draw for you is having that uh, that leaderboard system. And obviously on the ACC, it was just like kind of, it just when I started playing it, it just didn't feel right. It didn't suit my style. I mean, it didn't feel like I could do nothing with the car. Um, felt like I couldn't drive on the edge without all these different aids kicking in and you know it just didn't seem for me so obviously that's you know I started investing more time in AMS2 right yeah I um, felt the same way when I played ACC it was um, you know thinking back on it it's a different game engine completely different yeah. approach um, a lot of different things that were kind of you know, odd. I thought the game was compelling graphically. I thought the theme was really great. Um, the car sounded great. I wanted to get good at it, but at the same time, mm-hmm. I I started catching the um, the uh, the mechanical my mecha- my interest in mechanical components of the cars was was growing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I know one of the reasons why I went to Project Cars Two after ACC was to learn telemetry. Believe it or not, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Project Cars Two is a gorgeous game for telemetry and learning telemetry is so straightforward and there's a lot of because the game was so mature there was a lot of third party third party resources that you could take advantage of um, like for example you could get an excel spreadsheet off the internet and basically tune a car before you even sit down in the game so you just plug in what you worked on through the spreadsheet with all of the dampers worked out and all of the you know, bump transition speeds ironed out, plug it in the game, and then you have a basic stable platform to develop mm-hmm. setups to work for. From. But yeah. um, one of the things that inc- that intrigued me about AMS2, though, was that, because I, you know, when I saw that they had that kind of Project Cars 2 approach towards mm-hmm. the setup work, I was really optimistic about it. Um, That's it. So getting back to you, though, <laughs> what... Um, 
you know, you, you have a car. You, you, it's a popular car. There's a lot of times on the board. What's your approach to TT? Maybe do you stick with tracks that are more familiar to you, or are you not afraid to try a new track? Um, I do the majority of them. The only one I don't do is the um, Nords Lifer. Okay. Um, the reason why that you don't Nords? It just it might be an unpopular opinion, but it just it just doesn't do it for us. It just doesn't stimulate us enough to be driving that same lap for over six minutes. Yeah. I want to I want to like set a lap within a couple of laps. Yeah. And move on to the next thirty one seconds. Next... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh yeah, it's it's I think Nords is sort of like the marathon. Mm. Um it's like Bathurst is is obviously my like one of my sort of go to's like slightly you know, it's not the biggest track but I think it's it's challenging and it's you know Yeah. It's it's sort of that track what sort of you know, it gets you in the moment. It gives you the sense of speed, the sense of like Of course. You're in the car. Yeah. You you you're running sort of inches away from barriers coming down the mountain. Yeah, yeah. And um, then I think that part when you're coming down the mountain where you go over that little hill before that slight right to the braking zone, that's yeah. when it really starts to kick in. Um, That's it. And you're going That's fast. Slightly off Canva, isn't it? Off, a off little Canva bit as well. I think oh. I did one turn um, when I did uh, a race in the uh, Super V8, and the way the camera is on the track side view, it's like tucked in right next to the track, and you buzz by the camera so fast, and it's sort of like was like wow, I was cooking, and then like I <laughs> the back end was coming around, and I was trying to pass a guy, I was like holy smokes, this is. This is some speed right there. You don't really realize that sometimes when you're sitting in the in the seat holding the wheel. But yeah, like I, that's one of the things I love about AMS two is the replay system. Is you can really get that's you really feel like I, I really feel like the cars look more like they look like race like you're racing. But like when in you mm-hmm. when you're in driving the car, it it sometimes could be a struggle. You're constantly making minor adjustments here and there. You know, as you do mm-hmm. when you're on the edge. Yeah. But then in the replay, you're like, "Wow, that looks legit." <laughs> you know, that looks like <laughs> that looks yeah. legit. So, what's your, you know, what's your favorite car? What's your class? I've got a few. I mean, I'm liking the GTAs. Um, oh yeah. I mean, you know, the nice and solid. That's um, an easy one. You can <laughs> sort of swing them in. Um, They're great. I've got to say the Genetta Super Cups, and even when they were a bit. Dicey on the rear, um, a few builds back. I still like enjoyed that sort of on your edge of the seat sort of drive about it. Right. Um, it's because like you know you hear guys like in other games and to get the best out of these sort of sometimes rear wheel drive cars, you are sort of on a very slight slip angle to maximise the performance, and that is exactly how a real race car can be driven from yeah. the rear wheels power and steering throttle control from the rears so if anybody ever wants to practice with like getting to grips with obviously you know driving a car from from the back wheels it's the Genetta super cup yeah i remember watching um your recent league play and you were in a super cup at uh, i think it was nurberg mm. nurberg ring and um i think you had you picked up some suspension damage so the car was a little out of whack mm. But yeah, man, I think that's oh why man. I had to drive it even more out of from the back. I literally drive the whole you, car from the you back. You drove the crap out of that car. It, it was <laughs> amazing to watch. Like I, you know, I at the point where I think you were like in maybe fourth or fifth or something. But at that at that point, like a drift just, show. It was a drift show. It was just, <laughs> I was like, how is he doing this with a broken car? That's when I was like, it kind of. I, I, I tell you, since I've met you, like I've had several moments of like just absolute, just like wow moments. Like you don't really <laughs> fathom, uh, you know, obviously you have the, the first impression is, okay, his his times on the leaderboards are two seconds faster than what I could ever dream of like doing right now. So, and then after that, when I got to, ma- when I met you, it's sort of just like watching your own boards and um, the, your YouTube channel where you feature a lot of your world record, you know, laps. Um, uh, there was one that struck out. There was a time when I was watching your uh, Merc GT3 time trial. Oh yeah, Monaco. 
<laughs> and there was that camera angle where you're going one, through one of the sh- chicanes in the third sector. And you were like banging the car off of the off the walls. And yeah. I was like, whoa. Like, I didn't think the car could do that. Like, it looked like the front was going le- going right. And then the, the left, the, the rear was going left. And then you were hanging on to it. And then, boom, you're snapped into the next, like, the next corner. I was just like, that's crazy. So, Nuremberg Ring, that race was another, like, holy smokes moment for me. <laughs> I was like, this cat is... Like he's got, he's got it. You've got it, quote unquote, it. Um, so <laughs> let's. Uh, we talked about the, your favorite cars, GTEs and uh, Super Cup. Let's talk about yeah, your GTE least Super favorite. Cups. Let's um, talk about your le- least favorite. Least favorites probably is anything open wheel, um, ah. especially 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 classics. Um, I don't think anybody really like. I think classics classics are sort of like the first time you try scotch. <laughs> It's yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. People drink it's this. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> so you just drank something sour, like you know, when your eyes go like, oh, yeah. You know, just, it, you know, it just I don't know. Don't get us wrong. I mean, I've I've seen them sort of cars in real life. I'm being like servers and classic events and stuff like that, and um, beautiful pieces of machinery and stuff. But I've never really been interested in like Formula One. Um, you know, even now. So it's like kind of like I've never it's never been like my go to cars. Right. The same with like GT threes, you know. I've always liked GTE, you know, thought like the big brother was the better one. Right. You know? It's yeah. more like it's more meaty, it's got more power, it sounds better. Right. You know, yeah. it's you know. Um but yeah, anything open wheel really, I mean I drive them, especially like the more modern stuff, like sort of you know, what you would class as like a uh, Formula Ford them sort of f3 type ones i don't okay. mind them yeah well um, they have they have sort of they're like sort of training cars for a lot of different series you can go from a formula advanced mm-hmm. to uh to a gt quite easily because the weight transfers are there but you know the more modern you get in the formula one categories it's sort of changes mm-hmm. the cars are become you know that it's be more of an aero uh, more precision you lose a lot of that um you know that a lot of that edge of grip feel although some of the cars still have it and i think in ms2 they still have that little bit of touch of edge of grip yeah yeah um, definitely. but those retro cars I, I agree with you they're they're a um there's something to behold really when you're first driving them for the first time i when i was i was struck at how monstrous they were when i drove some of the you know the the lotus 79 and the brabham bt 46b um and I, I, I came the, away with it with a, a much better appreciation for the guys back then. <laughs> I know, I know. When you when you see the on boards, um, the on board footage from you know back in the days of the guys driving them, it's just absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. And then when they're on, they're on the edge and they're know, on the edge I mean, with a car that doesn't like being on the edge very much. Or no, it's not designed no. to be. <laughs> I mean, I think with the, within the game, obviously within uh, AMS two, them sort of cars. I think it's just. I think it's just the lack of detail, and that's by no means anything to do with the way it's being developed. You mean you think, think they're crude? Uh, you think they're just like just abrupt? Yeah, I think that's just the There's way no they finesse. were in in them days. So it's probably replicating sort of like you can't get the finer details and like the understanding of what's going to happen next underneath you. Right. You know, yeah. one minute, one minute you you think you're all right, and the next minute, you know, the rear tires just kick. Yeah, you give it a little bit too much throttle out out of the out of the corner, you know. It's, it's like, like you're riding a a wild horse or something, try to break it. Um, that's a lot it. Of the that, that's, times that's exactly. And, and you're not, you know, driving a, you know, right driving, riding like a thoroughbred, um, which is yeah. I I felt the it's same. It's kind way. of it's kind of like you know when you when you think to yourself, it's kind of like what I would call a gentleman driver's car. You know, if you're a steady Eddie and you know, you you don't like driving up most of the cars literally as fast and as flat out as they can go, then you know, the kind of would be perfect if you just sort of cruising around. Right. And just setting sort of half competitive lap times. I mean there's no doubt and there'd be guys out there who's just unbelievable in these sort of cars. But um but for me, you know, personally the way I like to the way I like to drive, it's either like flat out or nothing. Right. Okay. So, 
So let's uh, segue into your career. Um, now you're a mem- you're the captain of Flashport, the Flashpoints Esports Motorsports Division. That's how we um, got in touch with one another, or you got in touch with me, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us about how that came about. Um, what, what is a Flashpoints uh, Flashpoint, and you know, you know, what do you do in the, in that organization? Yeah, so um, it came about in 2019. We're in the, I owned a sort of community slash sort of club um, called LTFR, which was Lights to Flag Racing. Um, cool. Now I set like sort of, you know, our team, um, team of drivers together and stuff like that. And we, we always used to do like the leaderboards on Project Cars too. And like we'd have 10 of our drivers in the top 10. And we used to just keep on doing that in the weekly competitions, you know. And um, obviously the McLaren Shadow event come up. And obviously we all agreed that we're all going to give it a shot. Um, I do believe at the end of it, after four rounds, we managed to finish seven of us in the top 20 in Europe. Um, so almost half of our squad wow. occupied the top 20 in the whole of Europe between um, Xbox and PlayStation 4. That's impressive. Um and actually, one of my teammate at the time, um, uh, Pipes, he actually won the uh, qualifying rounds. Um, I finished fifth, which I was a little bit, I was disappointed with. I mean, I, you know, when you look back, I thought, well, I should have done better. But if you look at some of the names in it, um, you know, you had... Uh, uh, guy Manuel Rodriguez, who's like does Gran Turismo. He's uh, he was driving for Team Redline, who sort of like Max Verstappen and them's in in okay. that sim racing team. Um, we look at some of the names and you know there's some top top boys in um, within like Xbox and PlayStation. And when it transferred across, even though I was fifth in Xbox and PlayStation, I do believe I was still within the top ten with PC as well. So our times were on par with PC. Okay. Um, but it come about uh, because because of that. Um, I think the manager at the time uh, for Sim Racing, for Flashpoint, he had obviously some sort of association with Logitech. Um, and he just obviously contacted us, asking if obviously we, you know, we'll be interested in them. Um, like having a motorsport division within the within the Flashpoint, right? Um, obviously, Flashpoint's a American esports team. Um, you know they've got the various teams. What they've what they've got, you know, like Apex Legends, CS4, yeah, first person stuff, know, yeah, all like Rocket League, Rainbow Six. Actually, got, you know, they've got. I actually like watching first person stuff, but I don't like actually playing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, I watched tons of Apex Legends. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's how it come about. Obviously, they've they picked up on you know us having sort of that many guys within the top twenty within Europe, you know, and all all the team has done fantastically well. To you know, they should be all proud of themselves to, to get to that point. Of course, because obviously, um, my teammate who won the qualifying, he he got um, to go to Germany and race in the final. Um, obviously, you know, like a big thing. So obviously, I think yeah. the, the winner, the winner, got to be on the McLaren Shadow team. Really? <laughs> um, unfortunately, you know, he just come up a little bit short against some, like, you know, really top guys. Yeah. Um, but he made a, you know, he made a good account of himself. Yeah, it sure. sounds. It sounds like it's, um, it's really cutthroat. Like it's, you get one shot. You're like you're Eminem and in eight miles it's like you get one opportunity you know yeah. and you better you know bring it although in eight mile i think uh, eminem had like five or six opportunities but <laughs> nevertheless yeah it seems like that's there's it. a pressure's on right then and there and um that's it i mean some of these guys um you know i don't know i think the the received like logitech wheels and stuff like prior to going okay um, so they got to practice like, with the equipment first. Yeah, nice. so they got so they got to practice with the equipment. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think as a, as a as a stud, you know, I think he, he nearly didn't end up going because um, they were just going to count it like on P, like whoever was like top on PC. Yeah. You know, instead of taking it like from Xbox and PlayStation as well. 
And so that's how he obviously ended up going because he was a winner of like the sort of the console wars. Um, but yeah, was, I mean, even that was a good experience. You know, you're slaying away and you're looking every day and you're thinking, oh, I've only got to make up a tenth and I'm in the, I'm in the you know, oh, wow. I'm, yeah. I'm at the top. It's right there. It you like, see the number on the screen. Oh, that's got to be frustrating. It would kill me. It was just getting that extra, oh like, my gosh. you know, to get that extra two temps against sort of guys who's Faster. Yeah, but you're already at that point where you're like throwing the car around to get what you got. <laughs> mm-hmm. How do you throw it even more around? Oh my god, I can't even imagine. When, when I when I when I look back at that time though, I mean GT3. I mean you know yourself, it's not really my my major thing. Mm-hmm. So I always avoided GT3, and I like stuck to like um, the touring car class on project cars and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously when this come up, I started trying to obviously slay it. McLaren GT3 around but it was just a complete different sort of tool to what I was used to yeah um, I had I been investing in it from the start I might have gotten a little bit higher up you know but um, I, you know threw everything at it I mean fifth is still nothing we sniffed at I mean you know yeah of course and in Europe, uh, nowadays so. you're you know you're a mainstay on the GT3 leaderboards it's it's undeniable it's one of the more popular classes for people um, for a lot of reasons accessibility yeah, exactly. but also the sense of speed um it's mm-hmm. also popular in a lot of other games and people gravitate towards it um as they do in ams2 and i think my channel mm-hmm. too was basically almost gt3 only for about three or four months yeah uh, before i, I got to say, snapped I mean, to my why, senses <laughs> i mean that's why i mean going back i mean that's why i chose ams2 i mean for the terms of how it gives us like what we talked about that sense of speed and yeah, you, you really can actually feel, feel it. You can yeah. feel the springs compressing and that I can like sort of be on the throttle and have confidence that it's not just going to whip me around. Like yeah. I've been on some games where I'm wanting to, you know, I'm having to wait, 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 wait. Okay, right. The computer wants us to put the throttle in now. You know, it's kind of but like you don't feel it. I'm I'm dictating to the game when I want to be on the throttle, not when it wants me to be on the throttle. Yeah. You know, that's like you can control the car the way like that's the thing that also another thing that I should uh, mention back to what I uh, add this to what I meant before. There was another thing when I started watching your world record times besides the Mercedes was you do most of your world record times on defaults. And my experience Mm. with defaults is I, you know, I, I don't particularly enjoy driving on them but then there was an aha moment when i was like oh my god he's driving these on defaults what's he doing and it re- i realized that you are manipulating the ca- the car mechanics with your foot and your mm-hmm. and your wheel like basically mm-hmm. yeah and i just yeah. like that's another level of driving to me because mm-hmm. um, you get bl- obviously you you know you can you can throttle blip so yeah. i can gather more rotation by throttle blip and all I can manipulate the initial turn in, and right. that's nothing to do with the physics because you can do that in a proper car. Yeah. If I just give it a little sort of slight movement, I can already start gathering my rotation before I even hit the apex. Right. And that but was I've another also thing. You've got to have your visuals as well on cue, so everything's got a line yeah. into one. It's it's amazing. And then I remember when we worked together for the first time really closely for a league was, was uh, the Porsche. And the thing that surprised me about that exercise, which I thought was just fascinating for me, was you were on the throttle, I think maybe 10 seconds before um, I s- started braking. <laughs> 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 so like when you drove the car, you were like, hey, uh, hey, Tom, what about this uh, right front? You know, it's burning up. And I'm like, Craig, I already made it so like <laughs> the car is <laughs> unstable you, like the rear it's turning yeah. with the rears already okay and then i realized i was like you're just you're on the throttle way way sooner and more mm-hmm. uh, and you can control it through that that mm-hmm. circumstance just amazing stuff um, that's it i mean that, that's going back to obviously to builds and stuff like that yours or anybody else's and stuff like that um you know sort of grabbing setups from the tts just you know to put it out there is just is, is no is no good to then go into a race you know you know obviously I, I, we have to get that message out and like you're basically taking a build that's set up for a track that's optimal mm-hmm. and then trying to go into a race and saying oh, there must be something wrong with the game yeah it's not it's the setup that's wrong 
because the setup's not specific for a race. Right. It'll be good over one lap, and you'd be like, wow, I'm flying. I've left these for four seconds yeah. up the road, one lap. And then all of a sudden, you're just dropping off, dropping off, and then you're off the track. Yeah. Um, you know, people's got to start thinking, I'm not going to go and grab the top TT time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, grab your builds from YouTube and then go from there. And then, you know, you giving people a, an excellent ballpark, but also to suit their style, like what we've done, Tom, what we spoke about. I changed little, few little tweaks here, a few little tweaks there to suit how I like the car to feel. Yeah, exactly. And we weren't more or less changing the full like fundamentals of its mechanics. Yeah, it was just slight, maybe, uh, maybe up the steering rack or, um, you know, give it a little bit extra like on the springs or you know anything yeah. like that, wasn't it? You liked the extra, a little extra rear wing um, than I thought the cars needed. Um, mm-hmm. I I was always fascinated by how much softer you like the front of the car especially on the porsche um i think i i tried that build you know obviously i helped design it but obviously i'm driving it i'm like it helped me learn how to drive the car too don't get me wrong mm-hmm. so it was a good experience for me but it was a, a, the exercise i thought was was the fascinating component about, about our work was the troubleshooting and how we approached each mm-hmm. different problem it all wound up being the tires um and yeah. trying to keep the tires underneath you because that's it we know that the defaults you just rip you can rip them to shreds in the fir- first lap and you know they actually don't even have any wear in time trial yeah like so you can yeah. lock them up it doesn't matter <laughs> like you can lock them exactly. up doesn't matter maybe except a little bit of tire heat but that's it but just uh, like real world in, cars isn't it yeah no, just like a, a real world car i mean if you were to run out you know say a, you know, we went and bought a, a, I don't know, a McLaren GT4, and then we went on a track and we never put a setup on it. Yeah. Your driver's going to come back in after two minutes and say, this car's shocking. Yeah. And then, you know, you then you got to start sort of, you know, that's the thing like with test days, even on prop events, that's how, you know, when you when you actually look at the AMS2 and all the setup changes and delve into it, mm-hmm. it's just translating to the real world motorsports and how, them all them different things are i mean you'll get your driver come back in saying i think we need a bit more wing or yeah the dampers is, the dampers is off you know then odd out, out. you know it feels odd in this corner yeah. um, and i need like a little bit more traction here or something like that yeah or it's unlocking too much or not locking enough yeah so you might get it's like you say going back you might get a set up off someone else and think no this is not right yeah but you you know it's it's figuring out in your head straight away what's wrong with the car yeah. and you can normally tell by what the force feedback's normally telling you you know if you feel like oh, you're understeering and then stuff like floor charts and stuff like that can also help people as well can't it yeah you know if they can relate to floor charts and stuff say say like they took like you know one of the yeah, builds I... and think oh, I'm still understeering a bit or whatever you know they can just say oh well I need to one of my bit fears of this, is a bit of that about the sim racing community at large is you know the general reluctance of you know trying to get into setups and then the fallback is why should i even need to because other mm-hmm. teams you know give them to you um yeah but yeah that i think at that time we were doing that uh, we were in that league and it was just compelling the work itself was compelling to me i think the hours i spent building the builds and then the hours we worked together on each track mm-hmm. like it really came you know I was watching the races intently to see, see if I can see if there's any improvement we could wait, um, make in the car for the mm-hmm. next race at that track or a different track. Yeah. I was watching other cars to see how they were responding. Uh, one of the things that I think caught my, um, I remember was how um, the hairpin at Hockenheim, how um, your competitors were getting a lot more traction out of that 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 acceleration zone. Oh, yes, you yes, were a yes. little bit slower and I was like how can I fix that and I you know that mm-hmm. was the compelling um, it was because we opened up your diff so you could rotate so you were a monster in rotation but you just couldn't get that traction but anyway mm-hmm. that was compelling to me and that came around the same time as sort of like all of this you know a lot of AMS2 high level like oh this is simcade or, mm-hmm. you know, this game doesn't have this. It's this. That's mm-hmm. when it started to really, I, maybe it was, maybe it was just me. That's when I started paying attention to it. But mm-hmm. I was, I was learning 
how amazing AMS2 can be and at the same time hearing all of this negativity about how it's not mm -hmm. you know it's not up to snuff in the sim racing world and the amount of changes that can that can you know that, that you can me. do but it you can feel me. yeah like i um, and i was building a car for me and then building a car for you with the setup changes it wasn't like i was making like david uh, dave's driving academy and, and selling a build and everybody thinks it's great and it works in the game perfect no, uh -huh. I'm personalizing setups for people, like for you, like the, yeah. the guy that's going to be the hardest on a car in the game. <laughs> <laughs> if I could build a build for you, I mean, it means I could build. But the point being is like it, it didn't, it wasn't good for me. You know, I, I couldn't drive that's your it. car. You know, I, I, I felt like I'd probably be spinning out way too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, we, we found like stuff on the fly, didn't we? Yeah. You know, well, a few races where we, we obviously discovered where... You know, I can be changing the ARBs on the fly, changing my brake balance it's amazing. on the fly. It was amazing it was when just, GT3s had that. I loved it so much. It was just keeping everything within within check. Your yeah. tire temperatures. Now so, it's traction control. Now that's the new that's the new meta is traction control. Using using that to control your tire temps. Personally, I don't like to use any traction whatsoever. Yeah, well, like, I mean, I you're good enough zero, when you find the grip point traction. yourself. Yeah, that's great. But I mean, if you wanted to, uh, my point is like, if you wanted to, if you saw that your rears were getting overheated, instead of switching ARBs, you would maybe plop up a couple steps in mm -hmm. traction control. It'll it'll make sure it'll help you cool those tires down a little bit. Especially at, like at a circuit, say Laguna Circa down the corkscrew. You know, yeah. when once your tires are starting to like sort of drop off and oh, you're yeah. in a quite a long stint. You're definitely going to need a little bit of TC on. And the funny the thing is, screw. it's the core screw that it's probably causing a lot of the heat because you're mm. the, the loading of the rears and you're sliding around. Um, it's the the more you put pressure on the tires, the more loading, um, and then you put a lot of lateral G on them and they start sliding. The more the more it heats up, heats them up and that causes problems down the line. So, so um, exactly. where do you envision? Um, you know, what are your hopes about AMS2? Where do you envision AMS2 taking, you know, taking us as players and you personally as an esports, um, you know, esports e legend? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, like, but um, well, legend no, is, has a different context today. You can you can yeah. apply legend to anybody, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> just try to just try to make myself part of the game. That's all I'm trying to do. Good. Um, no, um, I mean, I would like to see. You know, I've, I've had these discussions before. I mean, going back to the, um, you know, sort of the, the traffic and then licensing of, of the game, um, you know, for the multiplayer and stuff like that. But it needs to be something that's going to, like, grip people, something that's going to keep them there, you know, with, with um, Razor's own servers or yeah. um, now and again they're going to, you know, have... You know, I've heard them mention that they're, they're going to bring like a weekly TT in, so that's going to have a competition feel. Even though there might not be any initial prizes, but there might be somewhere down the line. Yeah, um, like the Project Cars Two playbook. Yeah, yeah, but like maybe better. I mean, I mean, I've noticed obviously Fanatec and everything's on board with the MS Two, aren't they? So it'd be nice to see something like you know a wheel up for grabs if you're going to win this sort of TT event or whatever. You know, they might put a two week. Um, Two week um, sort of deadline on it, yeah. And the winner at the end gets the wheel, something like that. You know, super cool. That would be but cool. Going forward, I would, obviously, I would like to see sort of, you know, um, the competitions where where there's something to sort of keep it spicy and you know something for everybody to aim to, like for, yeah. ev for every level. I mean, like because a... it doesn't matter what level you're at. I mean, if you see competitions, you know, it's the excitement. You know, you're thinking, I'm going to have a crack at this. Yeah, and then if 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 you look at the end and think I'm 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 miles off, you just keep on plugging away and think I want to be in that top ten by a few, you know a yeah. few months time. Have the drive, the determination, the motivation. You keep on having the them ingredients. Keep refining you your skills, learning new things. Gonna get there. Try yeah, driving yeah, yeah. different cars, get faster in different cars, and then come back. It's it's like you know when you when you you know you look at the bigger picture. You need to be beaten to get back to get better. Of course, if you're never beaten, you're never going to improve. Right. And somebody's never like giving you a reality check. Yeah, 
and, and I think it's time to op- time to op game again. Obviously, AMS two, you know, it's you know at the point in where it's like on the cusp of coming out. Like obviously, we've had the come out party. Uh, the game hasn't you know g- gotten to the place where a lot of people thought it you know it could. Maybe uh, everyone has different opinions about it. Sort of like in that really kind of like feeling out phase. Mm-hmm. But I really do think in the next six months or so, this game is going to um, it's going to turn around, and there's going to be sort of like a like a just a critical mass of just people coming in, discovering exactly. what's going yeah. on with it, and then hopefully at that point, you know, the the Ryza it would calm down over at Ryza, you know, yeah. with as far as content, you know, and yeah. pat- and physics updates and things like that, and they can start working on co partnerships with say. Fanatec and having like a Fanatec championship, you know, mm-hmm. over this, you know, the month of June, Fanatec rise at AMS two championship or something. Mm-hmm. And then you exactly. get that. And then that could build into something else, start getting some visibility. Visibility is always important. So, and mm-hmm. that comes with uh, player pops. Um, it's so, all promotion for Fanatec as well at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, of course. It's all, it's all promoting their company. I mean, for, you know, for something like maybe you know one of the new DDs or something, you know one yeah. of the you know the their their low price ones, yeah, it'll be a big like smash and grab for somebody to, you know, you get guys coming in from other games thinking, well, you know, I want this. But the thing is, what I what I say is obviously with regards to the game and that steel. I mean, um, it's not to get carried away and listen to people. I mean, just like I would say to people, try it for yourself, you know. And if you if you're a driver who sort of likes driving on the edge. And you can get cars to come off the line if that they're not meant to be like scale cars and like certain games where if you're off the line, that's it. You know, I'm not yeah. going to mention other games because that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, you can you can save a catch. You know, if, you know, say you go down like Paddock Hill Bend, Brands Hatch, and you sort of done a little bit of a spin, you can rectify it. And we will see that on the telly time and time again. You can yeah. save a car. If a car's gone off the edge of grip, you know it's it's not meant to just go and you kind of get it back. I think obviously uh, a- a- AMS two it can go way over the top and you and you won't get it back. Yeah, but at some just, point that's just natural. When you have max grip and max max tire freshness. Mm. Other times it's it's just as hard as any other game. Mm. Um, but no, just 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 to say, like not to be influenced. Just if they haven't tried the game, give it a go yourself, and you know yeah. I think, you feel uh, the sense of speed, you feel the sense of grip. You know the force feedback I feel is detailed. Obviously, this is my opinion, um, but I've found a game that I like, and I'm going to stick at it because yeah. I believe if you stick at something, you're only going to keep on proving. If you hop in between games and different game physics, you're then confusing yourself and muscle memory and your brain what yeah. you're trying to do because then you're getting you're confusing yourself. Do I like this one? Do I like that one? What do I like about that? What you know? Yeah, you're backwards and forth, and you can never get settled within the set game. Right. You know, if you like that game, pick it and stick at it. Whether yeah. that's this game, the others that were mentioned, you know, pick it and stick it at it. I mean, yeah. once this comes up on the air steel, I mean, I do believe this is this will be, and I'm hoping, but I still believe that it's going to be a big esports platform. This game, I, yeah, it has it's going to be. I, it just it, it, the the path that Ryza has is so apparent. Um, they get the multiplayer thing rated uh, straightened out. You know, people are more compelled to stick around in lobbies. Mm-hmm. Their friends are going to join them. They're going to meet new people in these lobbies. They're going to be coming on at the same times. You know, I'm going to be meeting guys like Lugnut and, you know, guys that I've met online that are familiar faces, you know, that I look forward to seeing when I'm racing. Like, you'll get start familiar and it like builds a community and that's it's addictive. That's it. So that's let's, uh, let's, before we wrap this up, I want to talk about you and your channel. Um, you know, is there anything that's coming down the pipeline that you think anybody would be interested in about, you know, what your, what your project is, or are you just going to be doing, you know, world record videos or is there <laughs> anything else <laughs> coming yeah. down? Obviously, you know, I wish I was sort of more talented with my YouTube and skills and stuff like that, but if I get my head around it and that I might have to, uh, you know, get myself a little bit better with sort of creating videos, editing, but, um, obviously we'll, what I previously spoke to you about. There's something in the pipeline where I would like to create like like a sort of academy. Um and that's not saying like me saying, Oh yeah, I'm the super duper driver. Yeah. Um I just feel like I could offer a lot 
Um, of course. Whether that be race craft or whether that's like um, how we're doing TTs and how we're maximizing like performance levels and um, whether that's focus and, you know, drive or whatever, you know. Um, so the like, Nemesis you know, Academy? Yeah, like stuff um, like one on one, like sort of track work. Yeah. Um, see where they, you know, where they can improve and, you know, just, just the, the, the general sort of, you know, coaching, if you like. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you know, I'm, my vision, I've always wanted to, to try go and get me on like race car or get an opportunity to drive me on race car. So, right. I mean, that's my sort of vision, what I always wanted to be my end goal. And I, I mean, it's never looked likely that it's going to happen, but you just never know. You keep on plugging away and, you know, right. somebody sort of notices you and think, you know what it is, I see this guy all the time and, you know, he's doing something right. And there's always that little slight hope that I, that I hold on to. But, I yeah. mean, if it comes to the end, I still want to, like, go through and get, like, me, um, me race license done and stuff. And then I just buy my own little track car. Yeah. And maybe just start that way, you know. You know, you've got to sort of put a lot in to try for someone to give you something in return. Of course. Um, but once you stop pushing, then you just take your eye off the prize. Right. Well, whether, whether that's whether that's competition prizes or I actually have an end goal, and you know, it's always the yeah, dream of all self, of us. That's why we're here. Self. So I'm going to turn around and say, you know, I've got a little track car. Um, you know, it's like sort of just like grassroots car. I want you to come it's and drive. It's a hobby. It's it. It can be yeah. a hobby. It's compelling. It's competitive. It scratches a lot of itches. <laughs> you know, even if <laughs> it's it. going, you know, and it's. I, I remember my my days when I went to the track when I was young with my dad, and it was a club. It was just like he knew all these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, rubbing elbows with Mark Donahue and Mario Andretti, Michael Andretti, and Paul Newman. That's all it. these guys like that used to do this stuff. It was just like, and then. He was telling us stories like how they used to just hang out um, at night in their mm-hmm. RVs and campers and stuff, and they would just drink beer and just trade stories. I mean, it's it's a lifestyle. It's it's a track it, life. Track yeah. life, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a good term it's, for it. It's the smell of it's the smell of the rubber, the smell of the fuel. Yeah, you don't have to be you don't have to be you know blanks pawn or whatever. <laughs> you can yeah. have a great time in a Formula V. You know, um, exactly. Yeah. Mrs. The missus might not like it so much, but. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, anyway, I wanted to thank you, uh, Nemesis, for coming on and joining us. It was really a pleasure. Um, it's been a pleasure to get to know you over the past few months and to work with you. And I respect you a lot. And, and your competitiveness, is, I think, is is well suited for what you do. But at the same time, you've you've uh, been humble and 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 just absolutely one of the the greatest. Um, things that I've experienced in sim racing in my short sim racing career was to have the opportunity to work with you and doing the thing that I love. Um, and so I wanted to thank you for that. So, um, thank as, you. Appreciate it. No you say you've been obviously professional throughout. So I mean, you've helped us, you've rang us after races and stuff and, you know, how's the car and stuff like that. And it's just been totally professional and I would obviously respect what you, what you do, you know? Thank it's, you. We should share. Yeah, we share help, this interest, me. man, and it's it, it comes from two different directions. You've got the skills. I've, I, I don't, you know. So you're kind of driving the car for me in, a, in the way I want to. So, yeah. So yeah, great. So everybody out there, I wanted to thank you for sticking around. Um, and moving forward, we're going to be coming back to regular Boltcast episodes with Oz, and we also have some exciting interviews that are being planned. So keep sticking around with us. Uh, coming up immediately with the channel we're going to be having some more custom default setups for you be working and plugging away on those so i wanted to thank you all for watching and in the meantime take care